Uh, I'm back today with another tutorial since I haven't done one in a while. Um, I figured I had a tutorial come to mind, so I figured I might as well record it before I forget about it. And uh, that today happens to be um, how to create a sound effector in uh, Cinema 4D. Uh, these are pretty cool, and they're actually quite simple to do. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in into it. Okay, so once you got Cinema 4D open, the first thing we're going to do uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use a cube. And uh, you can really use mostly any object. Some work better than others, but really any object will work with this. It's up to you, but like I said, for the sake of this tutorial and example purposes, I'm just going to use a cube, which is kind of the standard. Most people do this. Um, but anyways, uh, we're just going to size it down to something that looks like this. Uh, now this is all on personal preference once again so uh, it's up to you guys how you want it to look um, so I'm just gonna do something like that for now <clears throat> excuse me okay and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to MoGraph and we're gonna go to cloner and select the cloner okay now we're gonna take this cube and make it a child of the cloner so just click on it drag it into the cloner Okay, now you're going to see this little orange dot right here. Uh, just go ahead and drag this over to the right so that they're kind of in a left to right alignment. And let's increase the count to say maybe 10 just for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, and I'm just going to drag these a little bit closer together. And they are not quite in line, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button right up here, look at our top view, and let's drag it, make it a little bit more uh, in line there. All right, so we have that, and we're well on our way. So uh, in the cloner tab here, you're going to see, <clears throat> or with cloner selected, you're going to see an effectors tab. So uh, with the cloner selected, we're going to go up to MoGraph, effectors, and click on sound effector. And if you did this correctly, you can jump back into your cloner and go to the effectors tab. <clears throat> and now you should see uh, sound has been placed in the effectors. Uh. Okay, so we have that. All right, so next thing we're going to do, uh, this is where you're going to select your sound file. So back in the, uh, when we click on sound effector, we're going to go into the effector tab. And right here where it says sound file, this is where we're going to select our MP3 or uh, sound or whatever. That's going to drive these cubes and animate them and make them go up and down and whatnot. So I'm just going to select a random song here. Uh, this one, for example. I'm just going to hit open once you find your song. And um, uh, before you even do anything, go down here to your frame range, uh, right here where I've, what I've got highlighted. Change this to roughly probably two or 3,000, depending on your beat song or whatever you're using. Because uh, these sound effector animations are quite long. Once you enter in your new uh, amount of frames, uh, just click on this little slider and drag it over to the right. So now you've got a lot more frames to work with. And I know this is going to get kind of loud, so I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Okay, and so if we go ahead and press play, you should immediately hear the music start playing and your cube should start doing something if you did this right. It may not mean nothing to y'all. All right, so you can see they're bouncing up and down. We got something, so I'm doing it right. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is uh, change the apply mode uh, under the effector tab with sound selected. Change the apply mode to step, and uh, then we're going to come over to the parameter tab. Uh, check off position, check, off, check on scale, and change the Y value to, say, maybe 1.7. And uh, now we should have a little bit more dynamic uh, motion. Okay, enough of that. Uh, so you can see how it's working. All right, so now if we go back into the effector tab, you will see that we have a lower cutoff. Um, this is a compression of the frequency graph, lower cutoff and compression here. And if you adjust these values, you're going to get kind of a different look. Um, like if I change the lower cutoff to say 60%, then 
then only on the left hand side of the cubes there those are going to be the only ones that are really uh, having any uh, animation to them whereas you go farther to the right on the frequency graph these cubes are basically going to remain stationary and if I go ahead and play this I'll show you what I'm talking about it may not mean nothing to so exactly what I explained there is exactly what happened so yeah you can mess around with those now the compression this will make the uh, cubes longer make them um, longer in length so you have more of a dramatic um, animation there. Um, so I think that'll do it uh, for this tutorial, guys. Um, oh, yeah, real quick before I forget, um, let's go ahead and talk about some render settings in case you're new to this. Uh, when you click on your render settings up here, uh, I always do everything in HD. Um, that's just me. That's just what I do. Uh, but you don't have to. And when you do that, when you get ready to render this out, make sure the frame range is selected as all frames so that you get the whole animation so you're not just doing one single frame. <clears throat> and then also go to save and save this as a QuickTime movie or AVI movie. I don't have the AVI movie codec on my Mac, so I save it as QuickTime, which is fine. Um, and now if you're using any kind of reflective material or anything like that, always make sure you check on anti-aliasing if you want this to look pretty good. Um, but also keep in mind that this will increase rendering times. Um, and if you want to, you can always add an ambient occlusion and global illumination and do that sort of thing. But whenever you add those two options in there, you'll increase your render times substantially. And also anytime you add in global illumination, make sure you drop in a light or some source of light because if you don't, uh, you'll just have a black it'll just render it'll basically render nothing so that's another thing to keep in mind <clears throat> when you're finally done and you got what you want you got your materials on there uh, floor and whatnot uh, just um, just press this button here and it'll render the active um, whatever you've got whatever your animation is it'll render it out so um, I would go more in depth but I'm kinda running short on time here so um, that'll do it for now. I hope this helped you out. Um, hope you enjoy, enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more videos and, uh, the stuff that I do. So, uh, thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys later. Peace.